Hi everyone, Mitch from Ablecine here with the latest from Vision Research. A few years back when the Phantom HD was first introduced, one of the really neat innovations that it came with was on-camera controls which made what was frankly a digital cinema high-speed camera system uh, but made it interact just the way you're used to using regular camera. Uh, that innovation continued on in the Phantom Flex and later models and then there was a new innovation from Vision Research it was the Miro line of cameras. These are very small, lightweight and petite, uh, frankly less expensive cameras than uh, their big brothers yet they still pack a lot of the HD quality, digital cinema, uncompressed raw, high speed capabilities of their big brothers. Now. This is the new one. This is the Miro LC320S, the 320S. And what that LC stands for is the bridging of those two innovations. This is a liquid crystal display. It shows your image as well as having an on-screen menu. And it's a touch screen here so I can go through all the controls of the camera and really be able to do pretty much everything you need to do to control the camera. Which means that this right here is a complete high speed digital cinema shooting package. Now it still uses all these accessories that we've developed for uh, the camera here at Able Cine. So we have these top handles and mounting plates, the little trigger on the top. You have a rod base that holds front rods here, it can go to a bridge. You even have our breakout box for added connectivity on the camera. The camera itself uh, shoots with a PL mount for using 35 millimeter PL mount lenses, as well as Nikon F or even a Canon EOS mount. So you can, with an electronic control, you can actually control the iris of those lenses. And it uses little camcorder batteries. It's all very petite, lightweight little package. You can record out to a, uh, uh, a separate recorder off just the HDSDI signal, or you can open this little compartment and you see that this is the onboard CineFlash memory. This little cartridge here holds uncompressed raw files, so it's very high digital cinema quality files. But let's take a look at the menu system itself right here on the camera. All right, so we've reset the camera so that I'm actually pointing at a subject and you can see the screen. Now there's two little buttons right here and the first one, if I push this top one, it gives you your status menu and you can see these are all your sort of main hits of uh, what resolution am I shooting at, what's my shutter angle, how many frames a second am I shooting. It tells me I'm actually in record mode right now and that's represented by this memory buffer bar right up here. And uh, if I then push this second button right here, I get into some basic controls. Now I have a main menu button right here, and that's going to get me into all these menu selections. But don't let that scare you. It looks like there's a bazillion things you can do there because there's some shortcuts. First off, you have this chapter heading sort of area, and that tells you here's video controls like color matrix and things like that. And if I have camera settings, I can then immediately go to the settings where, like such as frame rate and resolution. That would be the main ones I would probably be setting all the time. But I can also just go back to my main screen right here. And if I just click on any of these, if I just tap that, it takes me right to that control and I can immediately make that adjustment. So it's pretty quick to use. I can dial in on this keypad a very precision speed frame rate if I wanted to get to an exact frame rate. Or I could just scroll up and down to some preset numbers to get me in the ballpark of where I want to be. You can see actually that at 1920 by 1080, which is the resolution we're currently shooting at, the top frame rate is 1536 frames per second, so it's a pretty quick camera. I'm going to put it 1500 frames a second, that's where I'm just preset everything to. And now I'm back at my main menu. Now it says, where's my trigger mode? I can trigger the camera right here. I can get into different menu settings at this point, or I can go ahead and just shoot the shot. There's a, a trigger on the camera itself, so Katie, if you just give us a little wave. And I'm going to let it go for a little bit because there's actually a good amount of memory built into the camera. I hit trigger, now immediately you see I have a playback button available to me. It let me know at this green box here, it says, okay, I filled my memory internal in the camera. So what am I going to do with it? Well, let's play it. Let's see the shot. And there we are with Katie going ahead and waving at us in the shot. This is playing back at 1920 by 1080 in 24 frames a second out the video output of the camera as well as in the display here. You could be recording it. The reason it's at that frame rate is that's the video standard I set it to. I could set it to other standards if we wanted to. 
I, have the, um, I can choose to scroll through it quickly. I can pick my in point and my out point and then save it to the internal memory, that's cine flash, inside the camera. Or I can just play it out to an external recorder. But the camera is completely self-contained with all the controls available right here in the palm of your hand. 